grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite the kids to join me up front. She's a stranger, but we can do it. Good morning. Did you bring an animal with you today? Who is that? <gasps> Woo, we got a unicorn. All right. Good morning. How are you all? 
you're amazing. Do you like windy, cold days? This one's for you. Oh, okay. And tiger pants. This is so good. We've got like an animal theme going because today in the church is a day we call Good Shepherd Sunday. What's a shepherd? What do you think? Um, a shepherd is someone who takes care of sheep. Bam. Yes. Someone who takes care of sheep. Now here in Minnesota, we don't have a lot of sheep around here. So this is probably not something that we're super familiar with. You really, oh, at the farm, yes. Well, the Bible has all these different stories about God, and God is not just a shepherd. There's many names for God in the Bible. And I think the reason this is true is because God is so big that we have to use lots of different ideas to even come close to understanding God. So God is shepherd, God is light, God is uh, bread. You do? It's so good to know how to read. That's all right. We all start with our first book, don't we? God is like a mother hen. God is all these different things. So speaking of a book, does anyone know this book? No. Do you know this one? No. Okay. Well, that's so true. We're all creatures, aren't we? Okay, I want to read to you a little bit from this book called The Runaway Bunny. This is one of my most favorite books. I want you to listen for what the mother bunny does. And I'm going to ask you a question at the end, so you've got to pay attention. Let's, once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away. So he said to his mother, I'm running away. If you run away, says the mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a strout trout stream and I will swim away from you. If you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman and I will fish for you. <gasps> Look at the mother bunny. Look at her. She's a fisherman. Mm. If, well, you can look after church. If you become a fisherman, says the little bunny, then I will become a rock on a mountain high above you. If you become a rock on a mountain high above me, said his mother, I will be a mountain climber and I will climb to wherever you are. Hmm, that mother bunny is willing to do a lot of things here. If you become a mountain climber, says the little bunny, I will be a crocus in a hidden garden. If you become a crocus in a hidden garden, said his mother, I will be a gardener and I will find you. This is my favorite picture. It looks like spring, which may never actually come to Minnesota this year. <laughs> Just in case, we all need some hope. Okay. It will come. It, it just, you don't know what hits you. Okay, I love that hope. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to skip to the end. And you can look at the pages I, I skipped um, at the end of church if you'd like to come and borrow my book. So then she says, then the little bunny says, Well, if you're going to become all those things, then I will become a little boy and run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, says the mother bunny, I will become your mother and I will catch you in my arms and hug you. That's oh. my favorite picture, which will probably happen when I get home. Yeah, I love that. Shucks, says the bunny. I might as well stay right where I am and be your little bunny. And so he did. Have a carrot, says mother bunny. And that's the end. There they are. Yes. So I think that that mother bunny is just like how God loves us. Sometimes we need a shepherd. Sometimes we need light. Sometimes we need bread. Sometimes we need someone to tell us to shape up. And God becomes what we need, and that's how God loves us. God doesn't say, you need to be someone different than you are. His love is inevitable. God's love is inevitably coming towards us all the time. Isn't that amazing? Just like the mother bunny. Thanks for coming and reading a book with me. Does Pastor Molly usually say a prayer with you before you go back? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Do you like do a repeating prayer? Yeah. Okay. Do the big people help us? Yes. Okay. All right, let's pray. Pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. That comes in all shapes and sizes. That comes in all shapes and sizes. You love us just as we are. Just as we are. And so we say thank you. Amen.
head on there. Thanks for coming up. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number who, those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> yes, sir. Charlie, come back. <laughs> I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me he revives my soul i shall live in Our second reading is one P is one Peter verses two chapter two nineteen through twenty five. It is 
credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For this you have been called, because Jesus Christ has also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you shall follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one that judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we may live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep does not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, our creator, and from Jesus, the good shepherd, the gate. Amen. This Sunday, uh, rather than dwelling too hard into the gospel, I want to take us back to Psalm 23, a passage I hope you've heard before, maybe even many, many times before. I currently serve as a hospice chaplain. And Psalm 23 is easily the most used scripture that we turn to when facing end of life or the need to encourage the sick or the grieving. Psalm 23 is perhaps the most one-size-fits-all kind of living word. There are times when I hear this psalm and it's calming and inspiring. There's other times when I pick up on the large arc of a person's life journeying through all of those different seasons and God being present every time. This week, however, the Spirit surprised me by drawing me towards uh, verse 5, evoking this feeling of being very vulnerable, exposed even. Maybe that's one of the reasons why there are so many mentions of sheep and shepherds and gates in the Bible. Hebrew Bible, New Testament, it's all over. Jesus sure liked that image too. Maybe that's the, the, the common thread there is, though we are slow to admit it, we are vulnerable like those sheep, prone to wander, in need of some gentle guidance or not so gentle prodding to get us back on the right path. Children of God, we need guidance and wisdom of a shepherd to lead us through a life of risk and fear. So it is Good Shepherd Sunday in Lutheran churches around the world, and we're going, and we have already sung Psalm 23 together, so beautifully led. But I want to read Psalm 23 for you one more time to help us center our spirits together. 
I invite you to listen for the verbs, the action words, how God is leading and restoring and guiding and comforting and preparing and anointing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. God leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The psalm begins with a statement of trust. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want and ends with this declaration of faith. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 23 is the psalm we go to because these are the kind of reassuring words that we people of faith need to hear. Guidance for our wobbly walking. Rest for our weariness. God's purpose for our self-centered priorities. And in addition to being beautiful and reassuring, the psalm includes some paradoxical statements. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This statement seems out of place with the rest of the psalm, filled with fields and sheep and streams. A table set with my enemies? Poor sheep lured in to dine with the fox? unsuspecting child of God, seated at a table with forces that move against us? Now that is some vulnerability, to be seated at a table feasting with one's enemies. So what table is now in your mind's eye? What enemies would be surrounding you? Maybe you're dining with shame and anger, or broken relationships and addiction are at your table. Maybe there's an actual person seated across the way or an injustice so cutting that you know that experience would be set on on your Psalm 23 table. If God is setting a table for you in the presence of your enemies, what forces are gathered? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When I was growing up, My family did not have fine china, but we did have a cherished set of dishes that always came out at days like Christmas and Thanksgiving. I just dusted them off a few weeks ago for our Easter brunch. These dishes are a simple glass setting made in the 1930s called Depression Glassware. During that time of great economic struggle and suffering, this glassware was made inexpensively and sturdily so that it could be made and shipped around the nation at a low cost. The particular design of depression glassware in my family uh, is called Manhattan, a simple circular uh, pattern throughout. My mother began collecting it when I was a child. Every road trip my family took from northern Minnesota here to the cities to see grandma always included stops at antique shops so that my mom could see if she could find just one more piece of the collection. We, as kids, were less than patient with the antiquing. (laughs) And when we were still children, our mother died suddenly. And my dad was determined to finish the set. More antiquing. Now, as an adult, I am very thankful for their efforts and for these dishes that live in the hutch in my dining room so that I can pull them out and dust them off and and have a reminder on my table of those that we have loved and lost, and how new life and new feasts and new hope are still happening around the table. With our Manhattan glassware, we prepare a table in the presence of our enemy, death and loss. I suppose setting the table on these celebratory days has become an act of stubborn faith for me, 
Because as the final verse of Psalm 23 says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. People of God, did you hear it? In the face of death, we live. It seems absurd, paradoxical, and the way of God. Preparing a table before me in the presence of our enemies. And what of your enemies? The powers or behaviors which compromise your life that lead to death that which, which hurts others or separates you from God. Could you share a meal with them? Could you engage in these paradoxical phrases from God? Those enemies that we are engaged with throughout this life are not for our conquering. We leave them at the victorious, empty cross of the risen Christ, and we come to a new table set before us. And when we do, when we surrender our enemies to the risen one, we're not giving up or letting go. We surrender our enemies to Christ because we are trusting in the conquering promise of Easter. That life overthrows death. That light banishes darkness. That lost sheep will be brought back into the fold. That Jesus lives to bring life and bring it abundantly. We trust that God will do a good work in us and in our enemies so that all will be able to say, surely goodness and mercy will follow even me. So this week, I encourage you to set the table for a meal at which you will eat. Maybe you're dining alone, that's okay. Maybe your family is in the habit of eating in front of the television or standing around before you run out the door. All well and good. But I encourage you to take time to embody Psalm 23, verse 5 especially. Prepare your table. Sit down with yourself, with others, with your enemies. And be present at your table and remember Jesus who stands up to our enemies and the powers of death in this world, and conquers through love. Is victorious through mercy so strong and so wide that it encompasses all of who we are, even our worst inner enemies. Be present at your table and remember Jesus who prepares this table through the enemy we will all face one day, the enemy of death. Remember the promise of this Easter season, which sets the table with mercy and goodness in the house of the Lord forever. Take heart, you sheep. We are cared for by the Good Shepherd, who leads us and comforts us, and we are loved by the one who empowers us to face our enemies with love. Thanks be to God, the Good Shepherd. Amen.
Together, let us profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threaten to overpower us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression or suffering in any way, especially Dina, Ted, Greg, Pam, Gabby, Angela, Denny, Elaine, Cindy, Susan, Sue, Dave, and all others we worry and wonder about. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flock. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the health and well-being of our brothers and sisters in Tanzania. In this world that can feel so big, hold us all together. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with others. continue in worship with the collection of our support of this ministry we share.
Please stand as we sing our offertory. that were sown Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins do this in remembrance of me Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At this table, we feast with the mercy of God and the enemies of our lives, knowing that Christ is victorious. So come, those of you who have little faith and those of you who have great. For those, this is a meal important to your very life. And for you, who communion is still a great mystery, come and know that Jesus invites you just as you are to this feast of love and mercy. Come to the table, for all is ready.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you in the power of the Holy Spirit to live as a new creation. Amen. Let us sing. in peace, serve the risen one.